What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I'm here at New England Reptiles Distributors with Kevin McCurley and Tim Belton. We're over here, we're gonna check out some uh, albino western diamondbacks and uh, and some, what else are we looking at? Timber rattlesnake. Timber rattlesnake. Look at snakes, dude. We're gonna talk about preservation, conservation, and look at some cool snakes. This snake is horrible. This snake has always been horrible. This is a snake that, it pretty much uh, challenges your, venomous keeping skills and basically by absolutely no means should you touch it it's all about tools this animal is a frantic animal highly venomous and it's just insane does not fear you completely defensive we're to the point where you can't actually work in a thinking mode this animal is always in this defensive mode so i find this animal to be a little troubling so we're just going to get a quick video of this Tim, so Tim, what you do we, probably need to move over there. What do we specifically have in here? Uh, it's about a five and a half foot albino western diamondback. That is a handful, which has no reason to be a handful. This snake acts like you burn it with cigarettes or something. It's it's crazy because I've had other atrox that. They were quite good. We'll watch this. This is all about your tools and <laughs> a bit of a bit of uh, luck. <laughs> yeah, it's, and you never want to involve luck with handling any kind of venomous. It's got to be <laughs> this thing bites. It loses its mind. Um, it bites the hook. Yeah. It like doesn't want to lay on a hook and can come very far uh, up the barrel. And of course, it's making extra problems with any, with any kind of hook, trying to find a curve in the animal's body where you can catch it with a hook and then start using that to you know withdraw it from the, the bucket. And the animal just backs up and flops around. You know, this is great for a terrible video. Uh, yeah, you want to There you go. It, this animal just putting Timmy on the spot. Yeah, it's definitely putting Timmy on the spot, but this animal is a jerk. It knows that back right off the hook. Backwards strike? Yeah. This animal's on fire. It, 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 it really is. There you go. Thank you. Probably much worse. There you go. That's his chance. That right there. Ah, oh, beautiful. Man, it's a beautiful snake. Ah. Uh, what's up? Yeah, defensive. It's always never getting its, its eye off you. It's always moving, fighting. Oh, here we go. Here you go. Can we enjoy it for a second? I just want it to calm down. I want it to so fight. This, handling this snake is, is definitely a challenge for Timmy. You just can't do this where you uh, look like you can do anything smooth. It actually makes you look terrible because the animal. I'm sweating mess. <laughs> How's that? Get your heart racing, Tim? Oh, yeah. Got my heart I racing. I my workout for the day. I'm All standing right, so let's go distance. back and do, let's go do the little pleasant one. I'll take her. You know, Timmy, I can put her up on this metal table. She actually looks like she might be getting ready to go to her shed. So, Kevin, okay, so what, what do we have here? What are we looking at? So this is Crotalus horridus. This is classically known as yellow phase timber rattlesnake. This is actually an adult, very reproductive sized female. Uh, we are involved with timber rattlesnake conservation because they are vanishing across the landscape. Certainly in New England, they're, uh, compared to what their numbers were before, there's just uh, pale ghosts 
of you know what is left remaining of rattlesnakes compared to what they used to be. Certainly, uh, New Hampshire, they're thought to be extinct now in Maine, which means they've been extirpated by human persecution. So humans seeking them out to kill them, killing them at den sites and whatnot. Uh, but timber rattlesnakes, and indeed, are actually very shy, and all they want to do is be left alone. So let's see if I can keep her at bay. And then, so I know you do a lot with conservation in New Hampshire and New England. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? She's like, I don't like the surface. I know you do a lot with conservation of the timbers in New Hampshire and New England. Um, what I noticed that in New England, you showed me a lot of darker black face type of animals. Are these also common around here? Uh, common, never, never common. Totally oh. messing Kevin up. Hold on. I just, it's her rattle. A lot of times I can, that's, that is so cute. So she basically is just so nervous. So what we're going to do is we're going to calm her down. Okay, so we can actually talk. So timber rattlesnakes are really not common anywhere. Anything to do with New England. Uh, they're, they're vanishing uh, due to habitat loss, persecution, nobody having any empathy for uh, animals like this. They think they're venomous to hurt you, and in fact, they're actually only venomous to secure their food. Timber rattlesnakes are indeed very shy. They're very cryptic. They also need uh, large spans of uh, territory to survive without being discovered. Uh, they're very vulnerable at their dens. And years ago, uh, which is now known as snake fungal disease, there is a fungus that I sounded the alarm for, and it took me 10 years to convince people that there's actually a fungus that is, that is killing things like rattlesnakes, but it also kills milk snakes, black rat snakes, black racers, green snakes, ribbon snakes, ringneck snakes, Garters, snakes, I've already said that, red belly snakes, all the different snakes. Uh, you know, certainly you kill uh, Nerodia, water snakes, and it's a huge problem. These animals evolved with it, but the problem is we're changing the climate largely on the planet, and it is actually having a very negative effect on these animals. So, I have to make sure I got, I got that hook. You know. How do these differ from the Western Diamondback that we just saw in terms of just overall venom type well, body? Well, that Western Diamondback, just so you know, is a monster. Okay, so that is just, that is one, he's, he's a psycho. So he can make any handler really struggle with him because he doesn't want to be hooked. You, like this animal's in thinking mode. So we kind of got her where she's a little defensive. She doesn't like being out on this smooth uh, surface where things looming over so we're putting her out of her comfort range that albino western diamondback you can't work with it it's it's literally insane from the very beginning of ever having them he acts like we burned him with cigarette butts or whatever and indeed it's not due to anything we've done it just certain you know they're, they're individuals so certain animals just never come around i think like you know, even lilith Lilith is a super uh, aggressive king cobra compared to some of my other king cobras because king cobras are really smart, accurate animals and uh, she just really wants to get us. But you could me. almost make the argument that these animals are, are thriving and very healthy when they're you know, so active, so alert. Well, I think Lilith, from when they first got her over there to when I got her, how she was she really got worse because I think they were doing a lot of things with her that um, basically she just had enough. So here, we don't really even handle her much. We just kind of enjoy her and we're feeding her and want her to be very healthy, getting her nice and acclimated. And she's still just uh, ultra aware. She's so smart. She's so on point. She bites hooks. She wants to bite you know any single thing. So you have to be really, really careful with her. But uh, back to timber rattlesnakes, uh, one thing I want to note, in the reptile industry, so all reptile hobbyists, including amphibian hobbyists, uh, sometimes people regard our industry as being uh, animal welfare or anti-animal welfare or anti-animals, like all you want to do is keep them and sell them and that's all we want. When in fact, our industry is riddled with animal lovers. People that 
from the very moment that they wake up in the morning till they go to sleep, all they're doing is thinking about their animals, the welfare of animals, the plight of these animals in the wild. And by keeping these animals in captivity, this helps us become more aware of plights around the world. We also expose other people to animals that they would never consider. And it actually is a, is a good thing for animal welfare because we're, you know, these animals are all vanishing from their haunts. Let's be realistic. Tigers in captivity are captive bred tigers. They're not taken from the wild. And animal rights would be like, well, they shouldn't be in captivity. So you're basically saying these captive animals should not be in captivity, but they can't be in the wild because there's no place for them in the wild. Because there's what, 3,500 tigers left in the world in the wild. There are no true wild places where these animals can really enjoy and, and repopulate or expand their populations. It's always constrained. So animal rights has, they always talk about it almost like these animals still have these places in the wild and you're taking them from the wild when they should be in the wild. No, really what they're saying is you shouldn't just have it in captivity. We would much rather the animal doesn't exist. And a lot of these people are not even animal lovers, but I just wanted to be very important and known that reptile keepers and a lot of exotic animal keepers that are keeping this type of animals, you're truly animal lovers and we're always seeking to educate people. Of course, we have always some bad players in the industry or interpretations of bad players um, when things are taken out of context. But um, for the most part, reptile keepers love animals. They want to do good. Uh, we are trying to breed these animals in captivity. You're reducing the, uh, the burden of uh, taking these animals from the wild. But most animals that are being taken from the wild are being uh, taken uh, as uh, skins, meat, uh, some kind of uh, thing to put, put in some kind of uh, uh, liquor, drink, or whatever. They're not just you know, being removed from the wild just to be put into uh, pet you know, handlers. That is a small fraction of the really you know, horrible things going on. But we try to uh, increase awareness by using these as our um, spokes creatures of things like rainforests or New England wildlife habitats and whatnot like that. But I felt like I needed to say that. So what can we do as people who are reptile lovers and and just animal lovers in general, what can we do to continue educate. to preserve the species and, and protect the species? Well, we want to educate and formulate the message. So if you have a pet ball python, learn as much as you can about ball pythons, but also learn other parallels that you can use your ball python as a steward of conservation for other animals. Because we need to impress the public with what we're doing. So when we show a rattlesnake like this, you know, the thing isn't losing its mind, it's not going crazy. They don't want to hurt us. They just want it to be left alone because they don't understand us. And generally people try to kill these guys. So uh, they need wild spaces and it's very, very important for um, them to have it. So as a reptile lover, I must know these animals exist in the wild, whether it's wood turtles, whether it's timber rattlesnake, whether it's black racers or whatever. I try with all my energy, as a hobby I go study animals in the wild and I'm trying to do things like that, educate the people in the areas, people that maybe don't have sympathy, empathy, or understanding these animals. And I try to explain what's going on, why the animals are appearing in their yards, why I need to conserve that area, why we, need, we want to conserve this tract of land. And so I use these animals as my examples, but I'm always trying to make a positive difference and slow down the bleeding. Nice, yeah, and I know that you've been doing a lot with wood turtles over the past Yes. Uh, uh, for a while, at least, you know, since I've been coming up here, yep. you've found some wood turtle spots and I, I know you've been doing some videos on your YouTube channel and you've been There's making a lot of progress. Too, yeah. You've been making a lot of progress I'm with the neighbors. I'm making a lot of progress in this population, uh, educating people, uh, managing the habitat, trying to preserve this little track of area. So they're all constrained into an area. So if we improve the habitat and you get people to be uh, sympathetic to them and actually stewards, they're actually looking after them to make sure nobody monkeys with them in a bad way as far as like somebody wanting to collect them as pets or whatever because these animals need to be there in the wild and that's what I'm about. Even though I love wood turtles, I don't keep any wood turtles, I just like to see them in the wild. So ultimately, I still get the same kind of things by just watching and observing them. Same thing goes with uh, timber rattlesnakes in a lot of ways. They just need to be in the wild and I just need to know that they're there and that they're going to stay there.